This was one of my favorite parts of the book. You dedicated an entire chapter to the importance of surrounding yourself with the right support team and the staff and even with um, the right connections. And you had your Hollywood Squares model, which I think is a really great model. Can you talk to us a little bit about that and explain that a little bit more? Sure, sure. Well, here's the thing that there has been said by, by many different leaders that we are often, we are the average of the five people that we hang out with the most. Um, your, your health, your life, your business, your finances, you know, average up the five people. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and that's typically, you know, where you're at. It doesn't have to be that way, though. I have often said over the years, you know, that there's two ways that if you want to change your situation is that you can either choose proactively to spend time with different people and or you could help those around you to improve their lives and their careers and finances and business and whatnot. So I really think it's critical to look around you and look for any energy leaks, looking for anyone that might have, uh, uh, might, might um, I hesitate to use the word suck, but suck your energy. They, they, they feel it depletes, probably a good word. They, they feel like after your interaction with them, you feel like, oh, God, like that, versus going, wow, you know, I just really enjoy this person. And that can even go with clients. We often might find ourselves with a, quote, you know, I jokingly call it high-maintenance client or somebody who's just really a lot of work and it's an effort for them and it's an effort for you. It's perfectly okay to, you know, to, to gently let a client go because it's not working out or people in your in your surroundings. So I, I talk about that and then there's this whole exercise with the five relationship circles and you know you're putting you kind of plotting people out into these concentric circles and looking to see who you spend most time with but the Hollywood squares uh, exercise that you brought up that's really being deliberate to see who and you can make up um, I have some free templates on my website but it's a four by four or five by five you know 20 25 people you get to decide now that we're living in a day and age where six degrees of separation is more like one or two degrees from anybody in the world that you want to connect with. And it's true, it's not what you know, it's who you know, but it's also who knows you. So when someone is looking for your particular product or service, they go, oh God, well, of course, you've got to contact Kathy. You know, she, she's the person that for you that does this special work. And so you can be deliberate about, okay, who would you just love to connect with? Share the stage with them, meet them as a friend, go out for dinner with them. Uh, land them as a big client, anything like that. And then I include a whole bunch of steps that you can proactively pursue um, without being a stalker, you know, <laughs> to actually connect with these people through all the different social networks, through their blog, find out where they're speaking, what events they might be going to. Um, and I really emphasize a lot in the book the importance of bringing the online world into the offline. They're really inextricably linked, but inextricably linked is the word I'm looking for. But the, I can say to you absolutely that every business deal, successful business deal, and every various, all the different various sources of income I have have come about from people that I have met in person. At some point in the relationship, I've met them in person. Yeah. So.